What is up guys, this is Logan, also known as LRXC on Pokemon Showdown, and we got Crying versus Azepto. Crying, very good all-around Pokemon player, seems to be playing every gen all the time, and Azepto, I don't know too much about. Let's see how this game turns out. I'm a little bit behind, so these first games are turns are gonna be go, 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 but you guys should know a lot about lead matches at this point. Swampert switches is on the T-Tar. Might have to be afraid of a Rock Slide HP Grass Tar. It is HP Grass Tar. Crying doesn't call that correctly. Thinks it's just four attacks Tar that are all physical. And the Zepto gets a free punch on that Swampert. Here comes Hidden Power Grass. Again, please don't click Hidden Power Grass. Crying is clearly switching out. There you go. Nice. See, that's a good play. Click Rock Slide. Click Fire Blast. Click something. The Swampert's never staying in. Here comes Fire Blast. Wow, there's a lot to that Celebi, and this Celebi is low, and this T-Tar is getting a lot of mileage. Reveals three Pokemon, gets huge chip on the Celebi and the Swampert, and now this Celebi is literally phased out, or threatened out, by a Drill Peck. Crying is on the back foot versus a Zepto. Spikes go up. Crying doesn't care if the Skarm has Drill Peck. Wow. And here comes HP Fire Leech Sheet. Is there any Drill Peck? No, it's non-Drill Peck Skarm. Wow. That is, a. Uh... That is crazy. That is crazy indeed. In comes T-Tar. In on another HP fire, but the Selby is taking Toxic Chip. Does it really want to stay in Leech? Definitely not. It's going to switch out to something. What is going to switch out? In comes Dugtrio. On the Fire Blast, Dugtrio is going to live that. Might revenge the T-Tar. Does revenge the T-Tar. Nice pivot from Crying. And in comes Zard, also known as Moitris. <clears throat> All right. Here comes Swampert, just to get sacrificed. That's a risky turn. Zard totally could have clicked sub there and gotten a lot of mileage. Um, but, you know, Crying couldn't really do anything about that. So, if it's not... Oh, here comes Sub Zapdos. It's gonna sub out and baton pass to the Doug Trio. Maybe not. Let's see what this Zapdos actually wants to do here. Finally, we are up to pace. So, sub pass Doug Trio means that this team really wants Blissey I'm expecting multiple special attackers in the back here paired with Selby. I'm expecting maybe a Suicune. Perhaps even a Raikou, maybe a Jirachi, something like that. Something that really wants this Blissey gone with Subpass Doug Trio. And Azepto has to think about how to play around this. In comes Jirachi on a likely Ice Beam. Yep, nice turn from Crying. And now Jirachi can set up Calm Minds, and this is going to get scary and quick. Now this, uh, this sub is going to drop to anything. Like a seismic toss if the if the Blissey almost had Fortress. Why are you trying to do this to me, Azepto? Here comes Metagnos. I don't understand these nicknames. This is Calm Eyed Rachi. Probably not HP Grass, but it can get off a free Ice Punch here and fish for a 20% chance to freeze, which is uh, quite the chance to freeze. Oh, it's going to be Psychic. That does a huge chunk to that Swapper. Wow, is it Lefties? It is. It's going to live the next one more than likely, but Crying can just pivot out to Celebi. Wow. Down goes Swampert. And Jirachi stays alive. Gonna fire off another Psychic and finish off this Pert. And then we'll see Azepto go into Zard. I don't think Azepto ever switches here. Um, just let the Swapper die. Bring in the Zard, which will revenge this, assuming that it is faster. Only way that it isn't if this is some sort of max speed Jirachi, which I just don't really see it being. Alright, here comes Psychic. This is, I assume on this kind of squad, it might be a 252 HP Jirachi to threaten Blissey even more. Um, and 252 HP Jirachi is cool because when you click Substitute, Blissey's Seismic Toss doesn't break Jirachi. So Jirachi with a Toxic on the Blissey or something, it has a good chance to 1v1 Blissey with Sub Calm Mind. Usually it runs Thunder, so we might see something like Thunder here, which would threaten the Zard, destroy the Skarmory right now. Um... I don't know why Azepto isn't going Zard. Is this telegraphing that this is actually like a modest Zard or like a rash Charizard? Some people do elect to run that. I personally, I'm not a fan of it. The extra power can come in handy, but like, I just feel like speed tying max speed Zapdos are outpacing all the modest Zapdos these days. I just feel like that's so huge for the offensively inclined teams that Zard often finds itself on. This one's a little bit more of like a balance build. Could even be something like Gengar in the back. TSS plus Zard instead of Moltres in the back. You know, I think that might be the case. Gengar hasn't really had an opportunity to come in. Could have came in on the Doug Trio, but I think Zard is more offensive. All right, here we go. 
the Moltres was not the Moltres. God damn it! The Z <laughs> the Zard was faster than the Zapdos. It seems with that leftovers recovery, still elects to go out to Blissey. Makes sense. Fire Blast isn't gonna kill. What does Crying do about this Blissey? Do you go straight into Jirachi? What if Blissey just clicked Seismic Toss here? Um, yeah, let's see. Okay, here comes Baton Fast. Yep, easy switch into Gengar. All right, this makes sense. Is it just gonna boom on this Blissey? This might not be a super bulky Jirachi then. Boom on the Blissey would be quite devastating. Azepto has to play around that, but it's not like it can switch into T-Bolt. Zard and Skarm are both gonna get outpaced and two it KO'd by T-Bolt. Does Azepto have something in the back for Gengar? We know that this Tyranitar is gone. That's not a safe switch. Um, yeah, I don't have no clue what a Zepto has in the back, honestly. I'm expecting a Gengar of their own. I think that makes sense on this team. Something that levitates above the spikes and doesn't care about spinning them too much with, with uh, Blissey also having instant recovery. Um, here comes Taunt on the T-Wave. On the Thunderbolt, not a good turn for crying. It's Ice Beam, Thunderbolt, Az Blissey makes sense for the awkward Suicune matchup that Azepto faces, especially if they have Gengar in the back. This team ultra struggles versus Suicune. Oh, wow. Boom. There goes Blissey. That's big for crying. Zapdos is looking immense. Zapdos is looking crazy good right now. I think, I think crying is going to go Zapdos. And if something that threatens Zapdos comes out in the back, you just switch out to Doug Trio, sack the Doug Trio, and then pivot in Jirachi. I think that's the play. But let's see what's in the back for a Zapdos. I mean, heck, you can't use Skarm or Zard here. You gotta go the Mon that threatens Zapdos. I mean, I can't think of a grounded Mon that threatens Zapdos that would get trapped by Doug Trio. Yeah, but that would also get trapped by Doug Trio. I guess maybe like a Celebi? Um. But, and Celebi would be really interesting. You, I mean, Blissey plus Celebi, is it the most common on like, these kind of balancey builds. But this seems to be a bit more offensive leaning, seeing how much Swampert took from that Psychic. There's a Charizard on the team. Um, T-Tar was that lead Mixtar. Yeah, all right, they're both thinking. Crying's also thinking, what do I do in this endgame? What do I go here? I think the answer is Zapdos. Just because of what you see, Zapdos has such a big advantage versus, but let's see. Yep, there comes Gengar, I called it. Here comes Gengar. This is what Zepto wants. Gengar on the Zapdos. Zapdos, I don't think, should stay in. I think this is a pivot to Doug Trio and then go into Jirachi moment. I think that's pretty clear. And a Zepto doesn't have a lot of ways to punish that. Um, I guess what Zapdos could, what a Zepto could do right now, which would be funny, is... I mean, Skarm is actually pointless here. So... I think there's going to be a situational use where Zard is in, tries to revenge the Jirachi, and then Azepto uses Skarm as a pivot. The problem with using Skarm as a pivot is Zapdos can just set up a sub on that Skarm pivot. Skarm is actually a nuisance right now. Here comes Jirachi taking the Ice Punch. No freeze. I think he had to pull a double there. It's tough to make. Here comes Zard. Zard is going to come in. Skarm does nothing here. Skarm is dead weight on this right now. Kind of interesting. Zard is going to come and just crying, pull a double and go into Zapdos. If this Gengar, if this Gengar is fire punch though, after Zard outpaces the Zapdos and hits it with a fire blast, Gengar would finish off the Zapdos with ice punch and then finish off the, oh, it's fire punch. It's over. It's fire punch Gengar. Wow. Fire punch Gengar on a team with Pert and Zard is I, I mean, I, I'm with, I wouldn't have expected that either. I'm with crying. I wouldn't have expected that either. But, you know, hey, you can't ever go wrong with having more Metagross insurance and Jirachi insurance, but now crying's on the back foot. Um, yeah. Yeah, here comes Zapdos. The question is, do you ever go Skarm as a pivot here? I don't think so. I think, yeah, no, you don't. Because also, Skarm can 1v1 the Doug Trio in the back. So you just Ice Punch here. And then you Revenge with Zard. And then you hope that the Doug Trio doesn't have Rock Slide. And you try to kill it with Zard. And if Doug Trio does have Rock Slide and takes out the Zard, you just go Skarm and you 1v1 it with Toxic. Imagine Doug Trio 1v1ing Skarm in the endgame. That'd be so funny. But that's what we're going to see. Here comes Ice Punch. Does a lot. Zapdos clicks Thunderbolt. Any paralysis? Oh! 
It's actually a pretty big paralysis that gives crying a chance. That gives crying a chance. What if Zard and Zapdos is a speed tie? That gives it a chance. Wow, that's a crucial paralysis. That is a crucial paralysis. In comes Zard. Wow, did that paralysis really just win them the game? Let's see, is it a speed tie? No, I don't think it's a speed tie. Zard got left those recovery first twice. Has to hit the fire blast unless it's D-Claw. Yep, there goes Zapdos. All right. Can Rock Slide Doug Trio do it if it has Rock Slide? Rock Slide has been dropped often these days, but on this team, I think it's probably going to be Rock Slide. Maybe it isn't, though. Earthquake, Aerial Ace, Hidden Power Bug, and then it's either Rock Slide. I mean, could be Beat Up, I guess. But if it's not Beat Up, it's Rock Slide. All right. Azepto's thinking, but surely Azepto knows that the play is just to click Fire Blast, or I mean D-Claw. D-Claw so it doesn't miss. Because, like, I bet Banned Aerial Ace into Banned Aerial Ace crit would kill, but then you gotta deal with the Skarm, of course. <laughs> I don't know why they're thinking right now. Like, there's a one clear play. You click Fire Blast, and this game's over. I mean, D-Claw. I keep saying Fire Blast. I mean, it's just a big fire type. You want to click the move Fire Blast. Azepto's going down on time. 60 seconds left. Please don't time out. Please do not time out, Azepto. Please to God. Just click the D-Claw. Click the D-Claw. Click the D-Claw. Click D-Claw. Why don't you click D-Claw? D-Claw needs to be clicked. Thankfully, we have this music in the background. Yep, it's over. Great win by Azepto. And they're taking Crying to the ropes. Crying has to win two in a row on this one. Maybe a Zepto's better than I think. I don't know much about them, so I'm kind of, I'm assuming that they are a newer player, but maybe that is a wrong assumption, and we are on to game two whenever that decides to start. <clears throat> oh, the music. Ah, all right. <clears throat> we are back. This is game two. Crying on the bottom with a Suicune lead. This could be either like an off Coon with Calm Mind Hydro Pump just trying to lay the hurt on the team, Really, I mean, off Coon is amazing on teams that don't have Blissey. I mean, that's really the main thing with off Coon as a lead. It just pummels through offensive teams at the start. Yeah. Especially teams with, like, a slow Zapdos or a slow Celebi. Oh, they hate facing a fast, powerful Suicune. Here comes Kalmai. Does it just boom right away? Wow, nice boom from Azepto. Suicune's gone. Azepto just really wanted that Suicune gone. Um, let's see how that pays off for both players. Um, yeah. Let's see, let's see if that was the right decision. I I feel like that just guarantees that Azepto doesn't have a Celebi or uh like a, a Celebi or a Zapdos or uh, maybe it, there is a Zapdos in the back and it's one of those slow ones that would not like taking two plus one ice beams. I don't think there's any Blissey, Celebi, or Zapdos in the back though, and I think Crying can now play around that, like, huh. If I'm not scared of these specific threats, I think specifically Blissey, how do I utilize my other tools, whatever they are? I feel like there might be a Doug Tree on the team. Okay, here comes Snorlax. This is screaming more Magneton vibes. And the arrow switch in right away? I don't I don't think if you have all these Pokemon, you switch an arrow. Arrow seems like something that comes in later. Yeah, I don't I don't like the arrow pivot. Surely one of the other four mons is better coming in than Aerodactyl. And, you know, it doesn't even like being in here. I mean, Snorlax can actually curse up on Aerodactyl. It's a little bit scary because one Rock Slide flinched, but there's no sand right now. So Snorlax is healing every turn. It's not just staying at the same HP. Yeah, if I'm Snorlax, I just click Curse. Or Body Slam. You could buy... Here comes Swampert in on the Rock Slide. Okay. You know what? Am I... Is my Calx off again? Oh, yeah. I think Snorlax actually takes a lot from this. So I guess this, the Aerodactyl switch worked there. Yeah, I guess Curse is risky, especially if it's not Rest. Yeah, having Swapper in the back makes sense. Switches in the Aerodactyl, and now Azepto has to pivot into this. Here comes Suicune. That's a great switch. Uh-oh, it's Sub Endeavor Pert. This is an annoying, annoying set to play around. Um, the problem is here for Crying, though, is that Azepto could just Roar here if this is roar -kun. Here comes Endeavor. Yep, here comes Roar. Or, oh, it's just wait. It's just a little bit faster than the Suicune. So this Suicune is not an offensive Suicune. It's a more defensive one. The Swapper outpaces it. And it also doesn't seem to have Roar. Um, here comes Snorlax. 
Yep, love seeing a Suicune down this low. Can kill it with a plus one body slam, or they could just decide to body slam twice. Let's see what Crying elects to do. Let us see what Crying elects to do. I think body slam is just the play. I mean, like, just body slam, right? Surf is not doing a lot right now. You can paralyze something on the switch in. Um, if you have body slam, I think that the, the upside of body slam Snorlax over return is so big. Just getting that paralysis chance, a 30% paralysis chance, is just so annoying. It's one great thing about Snorlax. Even with all this Snorlax hatred that's been going around lately. Alright, as that though is thinking, how do I pivot into this Snorlax? I mean, surely you had to imagine that the Snorlax was very likely to come in. So you have to have a plan against this Snorlax. You had to be thinking a little bit ahead. What, what am I bringing in? The Metagross is dead. And now you don't have that easy switch in. So there might not be a T-Tar in the back. There might not be a Gengar in the back. Um, yeah, we'll have to see. Zepto is really taking their time. This is almost a this is a full minute of thinking. What do I switch into the Snorlax? It's gonna be their own Snorlax. What? That's a switch, and it gets body slammed. Huh. Wow, is this team really that weak to Snorlax once the Metagross goes down? Perhaps you shouldn't have boomed right away. I mean, the team doesn't look like it wants to face another Snorlax. To be, I mean, doesn't the team doesn't so far doesn't look like it likes facing Suicune. So maybe Azepta was still like, I just want to boom on a Coon and hope that Lax isn't in the back. But uh, yeah. Now, Craig has to be fearful of Azepto just saying, "Okay, I hate facing a Snorlax. I'm gonna boom this Snorlax right now on the Lax." Crying wants to set up Curse, but can't because it'll just die to a boom. So Crying's thinking, do I pivot around the boom? Do I play it safe? And even if Crying stays in and predicts the boom, oh, oh, yep. See, that was worst case scenario. Now we got a cursing Snorlax against the T-Tar coming in on the boom or on just any normal move, but gets hit with curse instead. This Snorlax is free to Earthquake as it have it or the very rare Brick Break, but I, I've seen Brick Break recently. Uh, I got wrecked on the ladder by a Brick Break Snorlax. Holy crap, that frustrated me. I was like, why is this thing a Brick Break? But uh, it did. It did. Here comes T-Tar. We don't know what this T-Tar is. Could be Band. Could be DD. Could be... I don't think it's a mix. Could be, though. You never know. We don't know. I think... I feel like it's qu quite likely it has Fire Blast. It's either Fire Blast or Band Tar is what I'm assuming. Azepto is the one thinking. I think Crying might have just clicked Rock Slide at this point. Or Roar, if it's like a Roar Tar. But without Spikes being established, I don't know why you would have a Roar Tar so far. Okay, it's Rock Slide. I don't know if that's Band Damage. I don't think it is. I think Band would have done more to a plus one defense Snorlax. I really do. I think Band does at least like 30 or 40 to plus one defense Snorlax. And the Para Flinch is a bound and gets a crit. Down goes Snorlax. This is bad for a Zepto. Suicune's gonna come in and get some a hit on Snorlax, but and thankfully now that sand is up, Snorlax is gonna that damage is gonna sting on Lax, but um Crying clearly in the lead. Crying can pivot into Snorlax on this Suicune and then click um click body slam. A Zepto could make a play and fake like their <laughs> HP fighting Aerodactyl. That seems like a funny play, maybe baiting out the the era the, the swamp hurt coming in. And then you could maybe like double edge into that swamp hurt and kill it and just take out that threat. I don't know. That's a that's a really risky idea. And this is only if the Aerodactyl doesn't have HP fighting. You could go Aerodactyl right now and click the HP fighting, but yeah, I think Suicune's the safer play. Me just finding things to talk about to pass the time when the players aren't clicking buttons. Anyway, here comes Gynados. Gonna click Surf on the Lax, yep. And wow, Azeptos really doesn't... Azepto really doesn't have anything that can even take advantage of Snorlax and doubling into it. I mean, you could have gone maybe like Aerodactyl there. Problem with, Yeah, I think it could have gone Aerodactyl there as a pivot. I think that would have made sense. I mean, because look, now the Snorlax gets Surfed, sure, but like, what are you doing about this Body Slam coming in? 
Yeah, Zepto has 60 seconds left. They're struggling versus the Lax. So I wonder what's in the back that struggles so hard versus Snorlax. I assume there's another rock resist in the back if you're going to play that aggressively with Metagross in the lead position. So I could see something like a Swampert in the back. Um, I feel like Swampert's pretty much the main option that could be in the back. And then the team just is like, wow, I hate facing Celebi. I don't know. Now Crying's the one thinking. I Just Body Slam. I think the very easy play is Body Slam. Eric Dactyl can't come in. If that gets paralyzed, it's over. Oh, he comes Body Slam. This gets paralyzed. That's huge, huge. All right, well, now the Suicune's just going to try to get a Surf off. But the thing is, is that two Surfs does more than a Calm... Oh, it's Calm Mind. Okay, it's setting up on the Lax. Okay. All right. That was risky as hell. Calm Mind. Now, Crying could elect the Boom. If there's no other options versus Suicune, you Boom here. But there's probably something else in the back that deals with Suicune when you got Swamp Prit, T-Tar, a Suicune of your own. I, I think there has to be something else in the back that threatens Suicune. Maybe a ground immunity. Hint, hint, Zapdos. Okay, here comes Curse. All right, it's just going to be cursing up. I think Snorlax might try to click Curse again here. And then just spam Body Slam. Yeah, let's see it. I mean, here we go. We got the Suicune versus Snorlax showdown. One is cursing up. One is calm minding up. Who's going to win? Usually, um, if the Suicune's really defensive, it can actually stall out in these scenarios, but Snorlax puts on pressure when it predicts rest turns correctly and gets these curses up. Here comes a boom. All right, it just curses into boom, making Azepto really think that once Snorlax was dedicating to the curse that it wasn't going to boom there. We also see curse body slam self-destruct, so unless it has Shadow Ball, I think this T-Tart is Rock Slide plus Crunch Pursuit. Makes sense because Gengar does kind of steamroll through this team. Yep, especially with Magneton. I think this is a Rock Slide Pursuit Crunch Tar. And that Snorlax had Earthquake as the last move. Here comes Mats on the incoming Earthquake. Nice pivot from Crying. What does a Zepto have to do with this? Aerodactyl is looking scary as hell right now. Here comes Blissey. Uh-oh. What in the world comes in on Blissey? I mean, Blissey is looking troublesome. T-Tar can Rock Slide. Here comes Swampert. Oh, it's going to threaten Sub Endeavor. Maybe you should have doubled into that. That would have been a nice place to double. Swapper wants to come in on an Ice Beam or a Seismic Toss and then get that Salak Berry and Endeavor down that Blissey. That would have been a really cool spot for Azepto to pivot into Aerodactyl and then start clicking Double Edge and threatening out. Here comes the Salak Berry and it's about to Endeavor. Awkward HP for Swapper. It dies to the incoming Seismic Toss, but now Blissey's down. You know, everything revenge is Blissey. So that was a great pivot from Crying. Again, would have been a cool switch to see Aerodactyl come in and pressure out that uh, Swampert and maybe even then like Earthquake or Rock Slide on something coming in. But then again, if you click Earthquake, then I guess Swampert comes back in, probably lives in Earthquake and then gets some Sub Endeavor action going on. So maybe Azepto also doesn't have ways to pressure Endeavor Swampert right now either. Here comes Magneton to revenge it, okay. I mean, Thunderbolt is going to kill. Don't switch out of Zepto. Why are you thinking? Save your timer and please just sack the Blissey. Unless you, for some godforsaken reason, have a Doug Trio in the back. I don't know. Because then you could pivot to Doug Trio. There's no way this has Doug Trio, but you could pivot to Doug Trio. And then you could use Porygon, or, uh, God, Blissey as a situational sacrifice to come in on, like, you know, Mence or T-Tar. Something like that. Not T-Tar. Ments. Yeah. Why is Zepto thinking? 30 seconds left. You just let the Blissey die. 20 seconds left for Zepto. What is happening? I think you make the pivot and then you think about what you're going to do. Oh, it's Jolteon. I was not expecting that in the back. Jolteon plus Bliss... Jolteon double blob? What? What the hell is this? Jolteon double blob. Here comes Sub on the T-Wave. Oh, it's HP. It's HP Grass or HP Ice. Wow, this is weird. This is really weird. Okay, so how does how does Zepto break this? If it's HP Ice or if it's HP Fire, Arrow can come in here. Okay, it's going to Thunderbolt it down. 
Here comes another hidden power. Jolteon's gonna live the next one. Magneton probably doesn't have T-Wave or it would have clicked it. So this is probably Toxic plus Protect on Magneton. Um, and not clicking Toxic makes sense. Jolteon's gonna click T Thunderbolt. Does Crying have an option versus this J Jolteon? Jolteon plus Aerodactyl might clean this up. If this is HP Ice Jolteon, it KOs the Salamence with the leftovers more than likely. And then, but then Mence revenges the Jirachi. Aerodactyl can't click Earthquake into the Mence, has to click Rock Slide and has to get a flinch on the Titar because I think Titar Rock Slide will kill the Aerodactyl unless, unless Mixtar's Rock Slide doesn't actually kill Aerodactyl. This is an interesting endgame. Can Azepto pull this out and upset Crying? This would be an upset. Crying's thinking about it right now. What's my play? Do I ever pivot anything else in? I think you stay in with Magneton. You can't click Thunderbolt, obviously. You gotta click Hidden Power. Um, if it had T-Wave, I think it would have clicked it at this point for sure. Like, instead, on turn 22, it would have just clicked T-Wave. And this game would be over, but it is not T-Wave Magneton. Again, I was just not expecting double blob Jolteon. That is a... This is an interesting pair. No crit. Jolteon lives. It's going to click T-Bolt here. Down goes Magneton. All right, what comes in? What comes in for crying? I mean, it's got to be... I think it's got to be the Mence, right? Unless you're really that afraid of HP Ice. Huh. If I recall correctly, I don't know if HP Ice one-shots the Salamence. I know in ADV 1v1, sub Pattaya Jolteon does. Don't use Jolteon in ADV 1v1, it's ass. This is the Raikou. Here comes Titar on the... Okay, okay, so it's HP Grass. All right, oh, I see the play. Is the play going to be to pivot out to Mence right now to Intimidate it? I mean, an Intimidated Aerodactyl doesn't actually kill Mence either. So maybe Krang's going to live with Rock Slide. Attack the the, re the Aerodactyl, and then Mence is going to revenge it with a D-Claw or something. Not D-Claw, it's Earthquake. With the Rock Slide, I guess is the play. Aerodactyl can very, very well win here. Krang is thinking, what is the play? Goes out the Mence to get the Intimidate. Rock Slide hits, connects. Another Rock Slide has to connect. Will it connect versus the Mence? Okay, it connects. Tyranitar should kill this. Oh, Arrow dies and crying brings us to a game three. That was the play. That was the play. Nice play. And you also fish for misses. Wow. Crying brings us to game three. Excited for this game three. All right, you guys. They're already back. Crying on the bottom. Lead Skarm versus lead Metagross. You're seeing unique leads each time. Pretty standard teams. Nothing crazy. I guess the Zard. I mean, double blob Jolteon is something I never thought I'd see. Um, unless I, I mean, is double blob Jolteon a thing? I don't think so. Double blob, by the way, means Snorlax plus Blissey. They're not really commonly seen next to each other because they're usually, they're both like, a, um, you know, they're both these special walls. But when you do see them, you'll see them with like Suicune Metagross kind of builds. Usually I'd say there's a Salamence here to pivot into stuff. And then, yeah, usually a Salamence and then maybe a Claydol to spin stuff away. So Arrow Jolteon over Ment's Claydol is interesting. Here goes Magneton right away on the Scar Minto. Reggie Steel? Reggie Steel? I mean, okay. What an interesting turn one switch. Didn't want Scarm to get boomed and also. But now the Reggie Steel is trapped by uh, the Magneton anyway. What is this Reggie Steel? It can't be Swagger Reggie Steel. Swagger's banned. Uh, please don't make this narration null with the Swagger Reggie Steel. Don't do this to me. Swagger Registeel is a thing that DICE has come up with. It's sub Swagger Registeel. Evil, evil set. Confusion is banned in this tournament, though, except from moves like Water Pulse and, uh, I mean, I guess, I guess Signal Beam, Dizzy Punch, moves that nobody's using. What else actually has a chance to confuse? Isn't that it? I think it's just Dizzy Punch, Signal Beam, okay, technically Dynamic Punch, what? And then you got, uh, I mean, I missed one. Water Pulse. There's got to be something else, right? Am I missing something? This is what I'm thinking about right now. There has to be another move with a chance to confuse. Maybe I'm wrong. I guess there isn't. Here comes... What? 
What are you afraid of? I guess Zepthos is afraid of like this Registeel just setting up amnesias on it or seismic tossing it down. Registeel is bulky. I don't know much about these Registeel builds. It seems to be a more recent creation, um, but I'm excited to see how Registeel works here. I mean, it's bulky, it has boom, but it's just a really, really annoying bulky steel type that threat that spreads paralysis and can seismic toss things down. I have seen it with Skarm. I mean, steel types are good. Registeel doesn't really have a lot of offensive pressure, though. Um, only through boom. Here comes Zapdos in on the Celebi, but the Celebi setting up sub. This is screaming physical offense right now with Metagross, Magneton trapping Skarm, Celebi clicking sub. We could see sub SD pass or just sub pass in general. It's going to baton pass maybe to a Dragon Dance mod in the back, but Zapdos clicking sub is the best thing for crying. Now Gyarados doesn't come in. Salamence doesn't come in. T-Tar doesn't really want to come in. Wow, sub is perfect for Zapdos. Sub, Zapdos, plus Registeel, boys. Are we going to see something crazy like a Defense Curl rollout Registeel? That'd be funny. Defense Curl Amnesia rest rollout. Cursed set that I believe Disaster Area has come up with. One of the more innovative uh, ADVers. All right, let's see what a Zep Zepto is kind of like. Oh, shoot, it clicked sub. Yeah, here comes Mentz. Here comes Mentz. Let's see if this Zapdos has HP Ice. If not, this Mentz could click DD. I mean, yeah, sub was just the perfect move there. Yeah, so we're looking at DD Mentz. Yep, it's going to eat that Thunderbolt. Here comes Rockslide just to break the sub. Does Crying just click sub again on another Celebi coming in, maybe? The problem with this Celebi is that Celebi is the one that's supposed to be getting momentum on Zapdos, but instead it's Zapdos getting the momentum on Celebi with sub pass. I'm pretty, I'm just gonna be sub pass T bolt and then insert your hidden power. Either hidden power grass or HP ice. Um, Crying didn't actually have to reveal HP ice there because Thunderbolt broke the sub, so we can't assume that it's not HP ice. Could very well be HP grass. Or well, I mean, could very well be HP ice. HP meaning hidden power. Um, yeah. Dude, this is up those nicknames are throwing me off. I almost called this thing Heracross. Good lord. Yeah. You know what else is great? Uh, the cat isn't in here right now. I love my girlfriend's cat, but wow, it really likes to play with that loud, annoying toy, and it ruins my narrations. Just kidding. I love my girlfriend's cat. Anyway, um, here comes the Salamence and on the Registeel. Uh, the cat's name is Princess Bloopy, by the way. It's a very cute cat. Very cute. It's a, it's a pure ragdoll cat, for those that are interested. And if you're interested, you could join my Discord server. There's a channel with a bunch of pictures. No way I just plugged in a narration! Get back to Pokemon! Registeel is in versus this Salamence that clicked Rock Slide. Uh, this is another free T-Wave. A very- Oh, Earthquake? Counter? No, T-Wave. I don't like this! Why are you doing that to your Salamence, Azepto? Now the Mets is getting paralyzed. This is your DD threat. This is the thing that's supposed to be sweeping. Unless Azepto's going for a totally different game plan. I don't like this. Wow, it's Protect T-Wave. That's such an annoying set. It's probably Protect T-Wave Seismic and then boom, maybe? Wow. That's annoying as hell. Here comes Starmie. Coming in on an Earthquake. All right, well, Zepto's getting some more chip, but at what cost? A Paralyzed Salamence. I don't think that's worth it at all. I really don't think that's worth it at all. I wonder if Magneton 1v1s this Registeel, by the way. Even with Protect Leftovers, I wonder if it just 1v1s it with a Magnet Boosted Thunderbolt, which is what it likely is. Um, I feel like it has a good chance, especially that a Zepto knows or can believe that this doesn't have Amnesia Toss. I feel like Magneton has a pretty solid shot. Maybe, maybe I'm wrong. Metagross is a weird switch into Starmie. Um, Shadow Ball Metagross, anybody? The mid-ground on Starmie and Gengar? I've seen it before. It's very rare. It's very, very rare, but I've seen it as a mid-ground for Starmie Gengar. I think it's super obscure and shouldn't be used. It also hits Selby. Anyway, here comes Mash. Attack boost? We do get the attack boost. Starmie's gonna die to the incoming Earthquake, but can spam Recover and fish for a Paralysis. That is a risky game to play, though. A Zepto could also click Mash on a Zapdos coming in. That'd be pretty cute. Crying has a good chance to dodge the Mash with the Paralysis chance as well. 
Uh oh. Zepto disconnected and has 300 seconds to reconnect. We're gonna pause until this reconnection happens. They have reconnected. We are saved. The Wincon was spotted, but now it has rotted. I just came up with that on the fly. I thought that was pretty sick. Like, because, like, rotted means it goes away. Yeah. Anyway. Um, yeah. Does Crying want to save the Starmie health gear? I, I definitely think so. I think you can recover once, but then you're going to be probably down to... Wait, how much did Earthquake do to Starmie? Earthquake did 39. It's going to do at least, like, 55 to Starmie. Um, so you'll kind of be at the same scenario. You'd probably be at, like, 51% health if you clicked Recover here on an Earthquake. But, uh, I don't know if it's really worth it. I'm not sure it's worth it. Not really sure it's worth it. Oh, wait a second. No, no, that was Mence clicking it. Oh, this is banned Metagross. I'm silly. This is banned Metagross. God, I can't, I thought that the Metagross clicked Earthquake before. This is banned Metagross clicking MASH right now. I think Starmie can very well stay in if it wants to. Or just go out into Registeel, maybe. Go out into Skarm. I don't know if you want to... Oh, here comes Surf. Okay, Wow, crucial paralysis. That is so crucial. That Starmie dropped to that incoming meteor mash. Unfortunate paralysis from Azepto. And this they are clearly on the back foot here versus crying with this crazy Registeel team. God, I already have the thumbnail idea for this. You ready? It's going to be like Registeel on the bottom. Metagross is going to be on the top, and it's going to say, Stop stealing the show. Like, but it's going to be steel? Because <laughs> they're both steel types. God, I'm so funny. Why aren't I famous? Why aren't I famous like Jim Cool? Anyway. Because uh, I play ADV1v1. Who does that? Okay, I got to narrate Pokemon. I mean, it's just going so slow. I hope you guys understand. Um... Blissey comes in on the rock slide. What a- I, I want this crying team. I'm gonna ask crying for this team. This team seems annoying as hell. I assume the back is like... I don't even know. Claydol? I think it has to be- No, wait. Ooh, it could- I, mm. I don't know if it's Claydol. It's probably not Claydol. This time he has spin. Metagross is dead, by the way. I don't know how Azepto does this. The, the Salamence is paralyzed. Braylon- I mean, not Braylon. God- Celebi is uh has sub pass has to sub pass and get a miracle dd mon to do work but with a full health skarmory that's going to be difficult yeah here comes Celebi. it's gonna click swords dance it's gonna click swords dance or leech seed first okay i mean i don't oh my god dude this guy just can't catch a break look at that freeze i didn't mean to skip there but look at that freeze now you gotta switch out go into magneton or something that's gonna sap a bunch of momentum Good lord. Unfortunate for Azepto. I think that getting the Heracross... The, I mean, oh my god. The Salamence paralyzed in the first place was not a good idea. In comes Zapdos on the Suicune. This is, oh, this is evil. Zapdos is going to get a free substitute here. Um, Azepto's option is to go Magneton here, I think. I think you go Magneton so that you can Thunderbolt it. But then, you know, Zapdos could even sub-pass out to Blissey or something weird like that. I mean, yeah, the only way... Azeptos finds this out is is SD passing to a DD Gyarados or it might just I think it's actually just sub pass it's not SD it's just sub pass so it's got a sub pass to some sort of Gyarados that's doing it or a T-Tart in on the Thunderbolt I don't like this play go Magneton go Magneton Magneton 1v1 Zapdos and will still be a Magneton to trap the Skarmory don't like not going Magneton there that's me though I mean yeah sure you get a DD right now but, like, what? I mean, Skarmory's still gonna live. Registeel's gonna live in T-Wave U. You probably have Lum, though, because you don't. I don't see Leftovers Recovery. Um, this is definitely DD. I, I can't think anything else. I think I think it's definitely DD Tyranitar. It might be, like, Dragon Dance with HP Grass. Here comes Dove Trio on the Dragon Dance. Or on the Rock Slide instead. Oh, this is over, over. I mean, Gyarados has to work a miracle on this incoming Earthquake. Yeah, Dugtrio in the back makes sense. Dugtrio in the back makes a lot of sense. Helps with Magneton as well. Um, yeah, wow. This is just over for a Zepto. Not much else to say. Again, can Gyarados do it? If you guys are still watching, you're watching because maybe Gyarados can work a miracle. Here it comes. 
Can the Gyarados work a miracle versus Crying's team? Here comes Skarm. Here comes DD. All right, let's see the miracle happen. Come on, Gyarados, click sub. Be my sub DD Gyarados. That would get kind of walled by the... Oh, it's HP flying, gets a crit. Wow, that does nothing. Here comes Roar. Not into the Magneton. That's the worst case scenario. <laughs> a paralyzed DD Salamence. Crying doesn't even need to really click spikes here. They can. Okay, here comes DD. But now, yeah, Crying just clicks Roar on this incoming Rock Slide. And, you know, Rock Slide could miss. Salamence could get paralyzed. What is that beeping? You guys better not hear that beeping. That's unreal. If you guys hear that beeping, I'm sad. Okay, the beeping is gone. The beeping is gone. Here comes Rock Slide. Oh, crit flinch! Nope, here comes Roar into the... Wow, literally just can't bring out the... Can't bring out the Magneton. Um, Azepto never wants to switch out to Magneton because then Skarm could just keep clicking Roar. And you don't want to see Gyarados or Salamence come in, really. Um, so yeah. This is looking over. This is looking troublesome. This is looking over. Um, I have no clue how Azepto's wins this. Not much else to say here. There's not much else to say. Here comes Magneton in on the scar. Does it click Roar? It doesn't. It doubles out the Doug Trio, crying just, you know, kicking a dead horse at this point. Nice switch. Magneton is dead. This is looking mega over. Again, Gyarados has to do some magic. But if Gyarados, Gyarados might have double edge here paired with head and power flying, so maybe it can crit a Zapdos. It's got to do a lot of overtime here, and I just don't see how it happens. Here comes Settleby. Okay, but Earthquake, do you even live in Earthquake and are able to sub? I think Earthquake plus sub plus sand kills this Celebi. Crying can totally just stay in an Earthquake here. I think the Earthquake plus sub plus sand kills Celebi, I'm pretty sure. And even if Celebi gets a sub, Crying would break the sub. Wow, but the, it clicks sub anyway. Ice Beam's gonna take out whatever comes in. But here comes a Leech Seed, okay. Wish, uh-oh, what's it wishing up? Oh, it's wishing up the Skarm! No! It's gonna, in is gonna come Skarm. Oh my gosh, the only, yeah, in comes Skarm and then it's gonna phase it out. Wow, I thought a Zepto had somewhat of a chance, but not anymore with Wish Blissey healing up the Skarm. Wow. This is mega over. In comes Skarm, trying to take a lead sheet, but in comes the Wish, and now it's going to just phase it out. Azepto has no chance. Azepto's chances are really nothing right now. Here comes Psychic. Yeah, it's going to get phased out. In comes the Gyarados. I mean, I don't... I mean, I guess I respect Azepto continuing to try, but I just don't see how it works. Like, I guess Gyarados still does have a chance with DD. It undeniably still has a chance with DD. In comes Ment on the Toxic. Yep, on the Toxic. Good pivot from Azepto. Gyarados is the only chance. The only chance at love. The only chance at life. Only chance at winning. In comes Blissey to Ice Beam this Salamence. Can actually just Soft Boiled here and then Ice Beam probably. Or he could just Ice Beam. However, that does give Gyarados setup opportunities. I don't know if this is T-Bolt Blissey. Um, I'm not sure it needs to be. I'm not sure. I mean, Ice Beam Wish Soft Boiled T-Bolt is a set that I don't know if I've seen. Um, is that though? It's 15 seconds left. 10 seconds left. Are they just going to let the timer run down? 20 seconds left. They click Hidden Power Flying. All right, they're just trying to pressure this Blissey. Are they going to get paralyzed anytime soon? No, they're not. They're fishing for some sort of crit, but even a crit Hidden Power Flying isn't going to finish off this. Finishes off. Salamence lives! Gets paralyzed at the wrong time. Unbelievable. I mean, I don't think it matters too much, but that paralysis undeniably sucks. Um, Ice Beam. Okay, now what's the chance? Is it time to go Gyarados? Is it time to go Celebi and just Leech Seed on the Blissey? Maybe. That might be the play. Here comes Celebi. He's going to try to Leech Seed on the Blissey, but Blissey can just wish and then go out into Skarm and click Roar. Or it could just go out into Skarm right now and click Roar. Yep, here comes the wish. In comes Skarm. 
Okay, so I guess like, I mean, even a psychic crit won't kill Skarm at 50%, so I don't know what you do here. Again, I don't even know how you play around Wish into Skarm. I don't think you can. And we see Wish Blissey creates a super awesome backbone for this team. Um, healing up Skarm especially, and Registeel, both prone to getting worn down. Um, Doug Trio to trap offensive threats to this team like a DD Tyranitar. Metagross, stuff like that. In comes Skarm. Skarm's just gonna phase this thing out. Selby's gotta click Leech Seed here. Um, that's the only play. Baton Pass is pointless. Psychic is pointless. Substitute again is pointless. You just click Leech Seed here. Um, and then I think you just keep going into... Oh, here we go. It's Leech Seed into the Starmie. Okay. Okay. Why, why, in, why not just uh, phase this out? I don't understand that. Wait, what? Doesn't this give Gyarados a chance to just set up DD? Am I missing something? Am I missing something from crying? Why would you let this happen? I don't understand. Why are you letting this happen? Here comes Skarm in on another sub. Is it just going to try to stall this out? Is that the boring endgame that we're about to see? Not much else to say here. If you guys are still watching at this point, I am surprised. I'm mega surprised. Here comes Leech on the Skarm, clicks Roar. I don't I don't understand the Gyarados. I mean, I don't understand the Starmie pivot still. In comes Gyarados. Just go back out to Celebi. You can't let this get toxic. You just you gotta go out to Celebi and just make stuff happen. Again, Gyarados unironically has a chance. I mean like. Oh, I love this. Gruntilda's lair, right? Is this Gruntilda's lair? Yeah! Bodo, bodo, bo, 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 bodo, 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 bo, bo, bodo, 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 bo, bo, I'm going insane, you guys. Oh, nice DD on the roar! Just kidding, I don't think it mattered. Technically, HP flying was optimal there. <laughs> uh, technically, you should have clicked HP flying there as Gyarados, as obviously the Skarm was going to roar there. In comes Doug Trio to take the sidekick from the Celebi. Bro, I literally have to go soon. I have to go soon. Can we finish this game, please? The though just go into Gyarados and click DD. Sub on the toss, it takes it. Leech Seed's the Registeel. In comes another toss. Uh, this is over. What does the Zepto do? Psychic? Yeah, a Zepto just loses. You just Psychic, I guess. Psychic? A Zepto, stop stalling! This is unbearable. Unbearable. Unbearably slow. Unbearably slow. This is the longest narration yet. And it's just as up to getting destroyed in the last game, game three. Psychic. Boom! Okay. Oh, that makes sense. Now Zapdos just revenges it. Boom was perfect there, actually. Boom was perfect. Zepto tried their hardest, tried to come back from this, but Crying pulled it out. 2-0 reverse. What a series. Good lord, that was long. I wonder if Jim's going to cut out some of that game three. I, I hope I'm right. Here's some donations, by the way. Got some updated totals. People are donating. People are being very cool helping to donate. Um, Yeah. Thank you guys for watching.